All right, welcome back. Taylor's also back. Hi, welcome to my kitchen. So we should say we are um, in Germany, as you might have been able to tell from the German produce. We are in Berlin in Taylor's uh, kitchen in Mitte, very central district of Berlin. So we're making a sweet leek carbonara today. Uh, the first thing you want to do is cut the tops off the leek and cut the tails off the leek. I've just done that um, because we had a short outtake, <laughs> which uh, slight filming this time. Huh? Well, we won't blame that on anyone in particular, no, but you. it was definitely <laughs> somebody. Um, so uh, yeah, what you want to do is chop the bottom off, chop the top off, and then you want to peel the outer leek outer kind of layer of the leek off and just give it a quick rinse so that's what i've done with that one and then i'm going to do that with this one as well and if you see any like i try not to get rid of more of the leek than i need to like you could probably chop that off a little bit lower which i actually might do just so i don't have any of the bits where the dirt might get into but that's all pretty much Good to go. Uh, so, as we're in my uh, kitchen, you might notice that things are in a pretty weird location. It's a bit of a weird looking kitchen. It's a very typical Berlin kitchen in a way because a lot of stuff is just on display and also things are in just sort of an ad hoc position like this uh, not at all flush dishwasher, which can't go more this way because of the sink and can't go more that way because then this cupboard won't. Uh, then the uh, dishwasher won't open because of that cupboard. But It's charm. It's Berlin charm. In Indeed. So what you want to do with the leeks once you've got them peeled uh, and trimmed is we want to finely slice them. Now, I'm not going to go super fast. I'm not super fast anyway, but just so it should be fairly easy for you guys to follow along. Uh, so I generally go, what about, what's that? three millimeters, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we're gonna do first. Always watch your fingers. Yeah, I don't really have fingernails, but the good way to do Not it is- Not because he has chopped them off. No, <laughs> uh, is to put it down like that. So if you do cut your finger, you're just gonna hit your fingernail. But if you do it like that and you cut your finger, you take off the tip. So no have it down like pointing into the leek or the onion or whatever it is that you happen to be cutting. Looks like you've got some nice sharp knives in this kitchen as well. And they're beautifully coloured. Uh, these were a wedding present actually, yeah. which is probably the only reason I have moderately decent knives because like most, I probably wouldn't spend a bunch of my own money on it. Although I love having good knives. Well, that's it. It makes a difference every day. You're right. It's not something you think to buy yourself. It is a good gift. Yes. Like it's one of those things. Good. A great gift is something that somebody wants, is either not yet aware that they want, uh, but they definitely need and or will use. So... Yeah, if you just buy someone the same thing they would bought them. That's why I've become a very difficult person to buy gifts for as I've got older, because anything I want, I just go and buy, and that doesn't really leave anything for my wife. That's true. And then I try to give her hints about what I should, what she should get me, and she doesn't pay attention, and then gets angry at me that I'm too hard to buy gifts for. But, you know, Can it's I ask, all fun. Is there a reason you put one piece in that bowl? Because that was the piece I got to show you that how wide it was, and then I just oh, chucked right. it in there. Because just want to know if there's method. You know, people at home might have chucked that what? piece in the bowl and be what? like, should we, should we do everything? What he method does? would there be to that? <laughs> I don't know. That's my lucky leak. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a restaurant lucky called Lucky Leak, isn't there? Yeah. It's got to be a vegetarian restaurant, surely. Yes, I've never been. So we do have a, a kitchen helper here with us as well. Oh, he's being a very good boy. Well, that's because he quite, I'm not going to give him leek. I don't think that's very good for him, but he really loves cauliflower. He really loves uh, tomato and he really loves paprika or wow. pepper or capsicum, depending on where you are. Um, so I'll generally give him a little bit and he loves rice. Like he'll have his dog food, he won't, look, won't even look at his dog food and then I'll put like four grains of rice in it and then he'll eat his dog food. This is a dog that's been living with vegetarians for a long time, clearly. Yeah. He loves veggies and rice. I mean, he does also love meat, obviously. 
but he just doesn't like his kibble. His kibble? His kibble, What's his that? dry dog food. Oh, I mean, that looks I mean, uninspiring at the best of times, let's be honest. Yeah, I think it's, he feels like if, if we don't eat it, then it's not good enough for him. I'm pretty sure he's, um, he's under the impression he's a small furry human. I mean, his name is Napoleon, so he's got to have some strange idea about his place in this world. I am the boss of the world is pretty much his place in the world as far as he's concerned, I think. Oh, I feel like we've really picked up speed on this league. Oops. Trying to go too fast and did a fat one. Let's slow it down a bit. I mean, you know, just in case. <laughs> that's good. Oh yeah, that's a very creepy face that's being made at the same time. Oh, yeah, I should probably not look at the camera while I'm using a very sharp knife. Yeah, I think let's lead by example, you know. That is one of the main uh, concerns with a cook-along video, is <laughs> people not keeping an eye on their own fingers. Well, the good thing is you'll be able to hear the sound and know that I'm still cooking. So there's really nothing. Yeah, we're not missing anything here. If you're not looking at me right now, actually, if you are chopping, please don't look at me right now. <laughs> I don't want to get any angry comments. I think there is a hope that people could even just follow this using the audio. Because I think for some it might be tricky to have a, a video set up in their kitchen. So. We will cool. be as, we'll give you as many audible cues as possible. So basically that's the leeks chopped. They're all roughly two to three millimeters wide. Mm -hmm. And they're all now in this bowl. The next thing I want to do is um, garlic. So I want four cloves. What's that? That's the, that I know that's not a clove, but what do you call a full garlic? A bulb. A bulb. Mm -hmm. So not four bulbs of garlic. That would be a lot of garlic. Not that I'm opposed to that, but that's like overpowering. That's like killing vampires levels of garlic. <laughs> okay, so I want four of these. Do you go for bigger or smaller? Um ones? honestly I go for the ones that are next to each other. That's, that makes sense. Um, but they're all pretty much medium. If there was, if these three were all small, I'd probably go, try and go a bigger one or I'd go five. Yeah. Um, but I feel like they're a pretty normal size. Um, so four of them will be fine. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes my wife likes garlic, but sometimes doesn't agree with her. Mm -hmm. Some people have issues with garlic and onion yeah. and things like that. Fogmap and all that. So... Uh, if it was for her, which this one's not, uh, I might even only go three and just slightly tone down the garlic, but yeah. uh, that is up to you. It's not going to change the consistency of the food or anything like that. So if you're, you know you're someone that loves a lot of garlic, you can go a bit more. If you know you don't really love it, you can go a bit less. It's completely up to you. But basically we just want to peel the garlic out. So this is quite a nice trick. Um, perhaps there are some people that don't know or use it. But what you just did there, which is, we'll see again when you do the others, is just to... So I generally, I take off the end and then you give it a little crunch yeah. with the knife and that just helps you get all the skin off yes. a little bit easier. It kind of slightly destroys the shape of the garlic, but that doesn't matter anyway. What you really want to be able to do is just get the skin off with a minimum of fuss. Yeah. Um, now this is going to be sliced. This garlic, uh, other dishes where you'd use a garlic press, obviously um, you might, depending on the size of your garlic press, you might have to chop them into um, halves or something, but we are going to slice it. It doesn't really matter. Like just slice it in a way that's comfortable. You don't want chunks, but um, it's not like it has to be ridiculously finely sliced. I don't know if anyone's ever seen that movie Goodfellas, which is an old Scorsese movie, I think. Literally the only thing I remember about that movie is him explaining how thinly he sliced garlic. Yeah. I thought that was such a good tip. <laughs> yeah, and um, whenever I slice garlic, I always kind of think of that, that he basically says that they slice garlic with a razor mm. and they sliced it so smooth, so thin that it dissolved in the pan. 
which um, maybe there's some Italian chefs out there will disagree with me, but I've tried that and I've never been able to get it to dissolve in the pan. Yeah. So it's, um, but it is, yeah, it's, um, you want the flavor of the garlic, you don't necessarily want to be able to see big chunks. So I am slicing it as thin as I can without being super pedantic about it. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to slice these and I do not want you guys to put these in the bowl with the leek. Just leave them, just leave the garlic once you've sliced it on the um, chopping board. There's a school, I think it's a elementary, mm -hmm. primary school. What do you call them in the UK? Primary school. Okay, so primary school in Australia as well. Yeah. But uh, elementary, I believe, in the US. You got some good autumn colours with your trees out there. Yeah, so this one that you can see that's like directly between us and the sand pit of the school. I don't know mm -hmm. if you can see that very well. Mm -hmm. But that is a chestnut tree. There's also a couple of other ones that you can't see. And I got to, for the first time, experience the somewhat hilarious practice of Germans going out and attacking public chestnut trees when they're, you know, ripe and getting all the free chestnuts. Oh. So um, you would see people out there at like seven o'clock in the morning um, with big sticks whacking the tree. <laughs> There was even this other time where I saw this woman that literally looked like she'd just come home from a nightclub. Like she had really, really bright red hair. She was wearing black leggings with a bright red skirt. And um, I'm pretty sure, I was th initially I thought that they must have known each other, but I'm pretty sure she just accosted somebody walking past like a younger girl and asked them to climb the tree for her. Because I then saw her again about a week later. And there was a boy inside the school. This was on a weekend, so there was no school on. But there was a boy. You get kids jump that fence and play in the little football pitch all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and she went over to him and she demanded to be able to borrow his football. He was playing by himself. He had nothing else to do once she <laughs> took the football. But demanded to be able to borrow his football to then throw it into the tree wow. to try and get the chestnuts down. I was sure that she was going to lose his football in the tree. But yeah. as it turned out, she did not. But he just sat there. He let her take the ball and then he just sat there. That's interesting behaviour from everyone in that scenario. Yeah, I know. But they love these chestnuts. I want to know if, uh, you know, do Germans have specific sticks for beating chestnut trees? No. Oh, um, they just, <laughs> they just, um, I guess, find a big one and use it. <laughs> Although what makes it even more kind of amusing is... Um, that's a park that I quite regularly take Napoleon for a walk in. Before I really knew what was going on, I noticed there being a big stick over near that. And Napoleon loves to pee on a big stick. And he peed on that big stick. And it was like two days later, I saw people picking up that big stick to knock chestnuts out of the tree. So. Do you love to pee on big sticks, Napoleon? Napoleon loves to pee on anything. <laughs> so like, if he has to, he'll just pee on a tree. But if there's something that's more abnormal, like a a paper bag or a plastic bag or a beer bottle or maybe he's got like a, a something a list, out of the ordinary yeah, like a bucket list of things to pee on before he dies well i don't know if he thinks about his own death that much but i do know he loves peeing on different things i mean look at these eyes i don't think he thinks about anything that much he thinks about why am i not getting fed well garlic's kind of poison for you napoleon so that's why you're not getting any of this All right, so we've chopped up the garlic. It's not good. ridiculously fine. Like there's probably a few bits in there that maybe are a little bit chunkier than I'd like, but that's fine. So then we want the thyme. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want basically four sprigs. Now with the thyme, this is always the question that I have. Is, uh, is that a sprig or is that a sprig? that's a sprig I think one that's what I would think as well uh, so I think I'm gonna err on the side of too much and go five of these actually some of these are quite small so I might go six yeah. all right 
A lot of time is a good thing. It's what everybody wants, <laughs> is more time, right? We've definitely got some more of it now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, now we're gonna put it in with the butter and the oil into the pan to start um, kind of bringing that together. And the reason I told you to keep it separate to the leek is I'm gonna read you the Jamie Oliver description. He says, trim, wash, and finely slice the leeks, peel and finely slice the garlic and pick the thyme leaves. Then place in a large casserole pan on a medium heat with the butter and one tablespoon of oil. So obviously everything goes together in a pan. But then the next sentence, once sizzling, stir in the leeks and 400 mils of water. Well, if you're like me, the first time you cook this, you've already put the leeks in there at the same time everything else went in there. Neither. So uh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Keep the leeks separately, but we're gonna make our way over this way to the stove. This is just one of the many benefits of the Cook Along With Video concept, Taylor, would you not say? Yeah, I'm just fixing all of Jamie Oliver's mistakes <laughs> yeah. is what I'm doing. Uh, so, I'm going to... You have not picked the leaves from the thyme. Space. I haven't. Don't worry, I definitely will do that. Okay. I just thought it was easy to keep them together if I did that when I was already over here. I'm just kind of trying to figure out which hob I want to use. I have a gas hob and even at the very low setting, it can sometimes be quite high. So I'm just deciding which one I'm going to do. But I'm going to start this on the biggest one and then I'll um, go from there. So... What temperature are you putting it on on the dial? Uh, at the moment it's on the lowest because I just want it on so I don't have to think about sure. it. Um, but it's probably going to go on medium for a little bit then once the water and the leeks go in it'll go a little bit higher. Okay. Alright, now I know I showed you a block of butter before but I feel like that's pretty close to almost exactly a knob so I'm going to use that up. So let me that's just make sure. Spoon, right? Yeah, I mean, that looks like a knob size. All right, so medium heat, butter and a tablespoon of oil. I'm gonna eyeball both of those. So let's say that's a tablespoon. Obviously, if you have a tablespoon, then measure it out, why not? And that's a knob. And then we'll put that in the heat. And I'm gonna put in the garlic and the thyme. I'm just gonna put that over there. I do sometimes find with thyme that you can add it on the stalk because the leaves tend to come off. Um, you just gotta remember to then. And then you gotta remember to pull the stalk. Otherwise, out. someone gets a twig. Yeah. But that's just if you're feeling lazy. This is the thing, I am a lazy eater, but I'm not really a lazy cook. I mean, I'm kind of a lazy cooker as well, but I'd rather do a little bit more prep beforehand so there's less to do when I'm eating. Yeah. It's why I don't really eat fish with bones in it, because I don't want to have to fiddle with that while I'm eating it. Mm -hmm. But a fillet, um, yeah, I'm happy to do that. All right, so I'm gonna get the garlic in there. Uh, obviously everybody's got their own stuff. Bendy chopping boards, yeah. love them. Just make putting stuff into pots and so forth a lot you easier. I'm seeing that because we don't have any bendy ones and now I'm quite jealous. Yeah, they're good. So you pick the leaves off once everything's in there on the heat. Yeah, I just feel like it's easier to do it now. Yeah. Can be a bit fiddly. I mean, there's probably quicker ways for me to do it. I don't pretend to be the master of time. <laughs> So many puns. So many puns. I mean, we could take a few more. That's probably a little on the hot side, so I'm going to turn that down. So I think the quick way to do it is you just kind of brush it against the grain and then all the leaves will drop off. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the quicker option. So your fat is bubbling slightly, but not too much. Yeah. You definitely don't want to burn the garlic at this point because that would give it quite a bitter flavour later on. This is something that if you did want to have it all ripped off the stalk before you got to this point, that's probably going to be 
worthwhile, but we're doing it all together at the same time. So. As long as you keep stirring everything. Yeah. It's on the lowest possible setting at the moment, but I am shortly going to put in all the leek and um, all the on water. So we're going to put in 400 mils of water with the leeks. Uh, I honestly don't know what 400 mils is in Imperial. I guess the measuring joke will tell us. You would hope so, depending on where it was purchased. Mm. One sizzling, stirring the leeks and 400 mils of water. So, that's so pretty much right. So this was a piece of equipment we did not mention in the equipment video. But quite honestly, if you don't have a measuring jug, you should probably buy one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit late now, probably, but you can also use, um, I mean, that's roughly what, a cup and a half? It is um, 12 fluid ounces. If it have um, cups on there as well, perhaps? Yeah, it is exactly a cup and a half. Oh, wow. Look at that. This is why you've got a cooking channel, Grace. Right? No you can have a channel where you just estimate. <laughs> Good. So we've kind of not done the audible cues so well for this, but the leaks have gone in now and then almost immediately the 400 mils of water. And I'll just turn it up a little bit. I'm just going to bring the heat up on it um, until that gets into a point where it's simmering. Uh, this is the point where if you did have a salad, if you had maybe um, a bread. If it's just a bread that you just chuck in the oven and it only takes like 10 minutes, then it's probably a bit early to do that. But if you had something that required preparation, you've got a little bit of time. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> you've got a little bit of time. time to cook as time. Ah, Mr. but then you would have to find time in every recipe yeah, that you put true. on. and okay. But yeah, <laughs> you would have set yourself up for failure. <laughs> Uh, so I've turned the um, heat up on that one. It's probably it. Yeah, it's at about halfway. I mean, on a gas one, I don't really know. That's full. Okay. And that's that's lowest, so yeah. it's at about half. Right. But as soon as that even gets close to kind of looking like boiling, I want to turn that right down. I don't want it boiling. I want it simmering, and that's going to simmer for probably about twenty minutes. So you turn Maybe the heat a up bit. a bit initially just to get it to a, a bubbling boil and then you turn it straight down. If you're going to have time to look at it, it's probably not, like you don't want it to be boiling vigorously, but you want it to probably be just under that. So Jamie says that you um, want to cover it and then simmer it gently on a low heat for 40 minutes. So it's probably, yeah, um, a little bit longer than 20 minutes, obviously. Uh, yeah. So the reason that's bubbling, by the way, isn't because it's so hot. It's just because the edge of the pot gets so hot. You get this with gas cookers that they'll make the edge of the pot really hot as well. Yeah. So. This should be some good smells in the kitchen now. Yeah, it does smell really good. I mean, garlic, thyme, leek, butter, none of that is anything other than delicious. Yeah. So. Yeah. What I'm trying to do is I'm actually, the reason I'm kind of still staring at the moment is I want to actually break up all the little discs. Mm, yeah. So this is just me being me. I, there's nothing that Jamie says about breaking up the discs, but I just I like it to be a bit more of a random kind of mess of leak rather than little circles of leak. So we have got some little bubbles starting to come in at the corners, corners, edge there. I might so turn that down, down now. Down All right, so I'm gonna leave that going for a bit. Do you and cover it or do you leave it uncovered? Well, he says to cover it, but generally I don't because I want to be able to keep an eye on it. So it's not really answering your question, is it? <laughs> Not, but Jamie would. Jamie would. Jamie's made this more than three times. Um, the reason I don't also is that my stove, even at the lowest 
can sometimes just be a little bit too strong. So I want to know if I have to move this onto one of the smaller hobs. Yeah. For now, you're keeping it on the For big now, one. I'm keeping it on the big one and I'm keeping it uncovered so I can just quickly check back in with it pretty regularly. I'm just going to do a little bit of kind of tidying up because I am um, generally one of those people that when it gets to the time for eating, just want to be able to eat and don't want to have to worry about doing dishes or anything like that afterwards. I've got a tiny extra little sprig of thyme that I'm just going to put in there because why not? Nice. Uh, so that is ticking along pretty well. Do you tend to put a timer on when you have a specific length of time things are cooking for or do you just do it um, roughly? Generally, I just do it like you're going to know, like obviously that is nowhere near being ready. You want to get it down to where you don't really see the liquid, you know, the water and the leak as two separate things. It's just one moist pile of leak. <laughs> In a real way with words. <laughs> what you're looking for, guys, is a moist pile of leak. Yeah. How delicious. Hot and moist. <laughs> uh, well, so. Fortunately for people who are less intuitive cooks. They're following this video, so just don't worry. Yeah, 40 until minutes. We tell you to worry. Um, if you don't want to listen to our chat over the next period of time, then uh, possibly, <laughs> possibly Grace will put a subtitle up that'll tell you where to skip to. But otherwise, you can just We're hang on. people that option, you know? <laughs> they can relax. Hopefully they've got, you know, a cup Actually, of tea or a glass of wine. Speaking of, David. Yeah, if you are someone that really, really needs to concentrate when you cook, then maybe don't do this, but um, You're not I'm going to have... putting people off. I'm going to have wine. <laughs> because I feel like... you got two things. Maybe, maybe if you're a little bit drunk, what you've made isn't as delicious. But if you're a little bit drunk, you don't care. <laughs> so, he speaks the truth. I don't see any way that it works out badly. Um, just let me think about what I've got to do once this is already. Because it does kind of get to it. So, this is going to sit there and, and kind of simmer down for a while. Just simmer down. Paul. But then you've also got uh, the, you've got an egg and cheese mixture that goes in late. And you've also got to do the pasta. So you, for a while there, you have not a lot to do, just a lot of things to keep an eye on. And then at the end, it all kind of happens quite quickly. So I figured before I crack the wine, <laughs> I should have some sort of an idea as to um, what I want to do. And we can prepare things a little bit earlier so that it's not a mad rush at the end. Some people might not have grated, pre-grated Parmesan. Yeah. So this is a good time to grate that cheese. Yeah, definitely. So you want 50 grams of finely grated Parmesan. So if you haven't already done that, or if you didn't buy Parmesan that's already grated, definitely do that now. Um, so what's going to happen later is you're going to have an egg and you're going to beat it. And then you're going to add 50 grams of Parmesan to that. And you're going to add a little bit of the starchy water that you take out of the pasta just to kind of loosen the mixture. So in a little bit, we're going to put the pasta on. There's no point putting on quite yet. And what I generally do is I will just get a mug and I will have my colander in the sink and I'll have it like that. Yeah. And so that way it just catches a mug. You don't need a full mug of the starchy water, but it's kind of a little bit, you use it to get the consistency that you want. So you're better off having more than you need than not enough. But that's all stuff that we don't really have to worry about right now. Sounds like it's wine time then. But if you haven't grated the parmesan, I would do that. I'm just going to grab a, two wine glasses. Again, beautiful Berlin kitchen is my glasses are in a different room. <laughs> Napoleon, do you want a wine? If you say yes, I will give you one. Just say the word. His tail's walking away. No, he's got to learn how to talk if he wants alcohol. <laughs> That's the rule. So, Taylor, some people will have noticed that you don't sound like a typical Berlin. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm Australian, <laughs> which Tell you've probably you probably picked. Why, why are you here? 
What are you doing? Uh, so, while well, I'm making a poor stab at being a cook is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> uh, but, so I went traveling like most Aussies do in their 20s. I've always been a bit of a late bloomer, so I did it in my very early 30s. Uh, and I'd quit a job in Australia and was planning to spend kind of six months traveling uh, Europe. And I came through Berlin and I loved it. And I kept traveling and I came back a little bit later, like about four months later and spent a bit more time here, about two weeks, and I still loved it. And the plan originally was to actually move to London. That's where I spoke the language. I had some friends in London, but I didn't love London. Mm -mm. There's a lot of great stuff about London, but it was not a city that really felt me, you know, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Berlin really did, even though I didn't speak the language. Um, so I decided to move to Berlin for what I figured would be maybe six months to a year. And The classic Berlin story. What's the date today? It is the 5th of November. Ah, bonfire day, bonfire night. Yeah. Um, on the 14th, it'll be 11 years. So in a bit under two weeks, I'll have been in Berlin for 11 years. Wow. I love so, also, why do you know about bonfire night? Is that also a thing in Australia? Yeah, I think we have it, but I don't think it's in November. That sounds like it might be a fire hazard being at the start of our summer. Mm. Well, it's in our spring, but it's at the end of halfway through our spring. Mm. And an Australian spring is like a European summer. So. That's... That's not the best time for bonfire. But no, Lynn's mentioned it to me this morning, so that's why I knew that it was bonfire night. There you are. Thanks so much. Um, cheers. If you are all drinking, cheers to you as well. <laughs> Non-alcoholic beverages are also available. It's true. It's true. Uh, it's a Friday. What time is it? It is a Friday. It's certainly past three. It's three. <laughs> yeah, it's totally time. <laughs> It's beer o'clock. We're well, happy it's wine to do this because of the light, you know? Mm. Obviously, that's why. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm just keeping an eye on that. There's nothing really to worry about. Uh, I might eyeball the pasta. And I might boil the kettle. Now, everybody's going to do pasta a little bit different. I don't know if I do pasta in the correct way, but... I like to boil the water first so it's done. And then I put that into the pot rather than putting cold water in a pot and waiting for that to boil. Yeah, I'm not sure which one is more uh, energy efficient, you know. Look, to be honest, I would say normally um, the kettle would be more energy efficient, surely. But it is a gas cooker on an electric cooker yeah. kettle's probably going to be a little bit noisy so um but yeah actually one thing while we're talking i've kind of mentioned a few times that our berlin kitchen is kind of this ad hoc ridiculous thing and why is that and it's because in germany you generally don't get a kitchen as a renter so you'll come into an apartment that you want to rent and i should preface this by saying it has changed a little over the last couple of years as we get more expats, more Americans, British, Australians moving to Berlin. You will get places that specifically say we have a built-in kitchen, but this is always a bonus. It is not the expected. So whereas if you moved into an apartment in Australia, it would have benches and cupboards and all of that. Maybe not a fridge, maybe not a dishwasher, but it would have all the benches and the cupboards, an oven, a stove, a sink. In Berlin, when you move in, you get that and you get maybe that. And that is usually in its own cabinet that is the cheapest possible sink that the landlord can purchase. And then you have to put in your own cabinets. So a lot of Berliners will just find a bookshelf on the side of the road and put that in their kitchen. Whereas we've, this was here, we were lucky enough that this was here when we moved in, which is why it's very skew if, because I would have not put up with that. Um, but this is me, which isn't a lot better, but uh, this we had in our old apartment, this we bought specifically for this apartment, which is why they don't quite match either. 
Didn't you have to shave off the bottom of these uh, a little bit? Or were you going to... No. Okay. So what happened was this is the thing that Grace's uh, fiance Will helped me carry up the stairs, which is very heavy. And then we put new feet on it to get it at about the right size of the cooker. And then I bought this later, assuming that benches are all the same height and always they're going to be the same height as the cooker because the cooker's always the same height. But then I put it together and it's an inch too tall, which in... I had a, I bought this part of wood again, the exact same style to put on the top of this one, whereas this is the one that came with it. And the whole idea was I wanted it to be a little bit wider, it'd give me a little bit of a gap here. I was gonna drill, drill a hole out here for the gas pipe, which is incredibly well hidden away, <laughs> the gas pipe here in this kitchen, um, so that it could go kind of straight through the bench. But then as it turns out, because it's too tall, it still leaves a decent space for the gas pipe to go through. But it's one of those things, like if I was gonna redo this kitchen, first of all, I can't just go to Ikea because I don't know how well you can tell this, but there are no right angles in this kitchen. It's basically a kind of, almost a rhombus, if anyone remembers their shapes what from geometry. Shape, so this is, this is to, this is less than 90 degrees. It's probably about 80. So that I couldn't just purchase something in Ikea and put it in there. The corner over there where the table is, is more than 90 degrees. Um, so again, I can't just put a table in there. Napoleon's gone to sleep. No one's been giving him. <laughs> it's very bored with your kitchen rat. Yeah. <laughs> no one's been giving him enough attention. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of like I have to get a custom built kitchen which costs a fortune compared to just going to Ikea. But I do particularly like that they had the water pipes going through the ceiling here and they thought, you know what, we could put all the pipes together. Or we could have one deliciously ugly pipe on either side of the room. Well, Taylor loves to complain about kitchens, Berlin kitchens, and general flat setups in general. <laughs> so I'm really pleased we got some of that on this yep. video. You can't get Taylor without <laughs> getting Taylor complaining about something. That just wouldn't be it. So, how's this looking right now? Nice. Yeah, so that's just reducing down. That's also part of the reason that I leave the um, top off so that the steam just goes out. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, it would stay a lot more be... watery with Jamie's method. Yeah, it just take longer as well. Like, this is another thing. The time I cooked it for you... Um... I think it took like an hour because it was just too watery for too long. So yeah. but anyway, well, that's a good tip. This might end up being a longer video than you guys had all intentioned. So uh, sorry for that if that happens. Well, fortunately, they've got such good chat. So yeah, what else can I complain about? <laughs> uh, I'm sure you can find something. I probably could. Oh well, yes, look here are your colourful knives that you were talking about. There's my colourful wow. knives and my knife magnet. Oh, here, I can complain about this thing that I've just fixed. This was, this light here wasn't for... I was joking, I was joking. It wasn't for the filming. I actually just got to a point where I got really frustrated. In summer, this room is perfectly light because the sun's up till 10, but in winter it's dark at five. And you've got the room light here, which we're not using because it's very harsh. And you've got the other light near the, de near the table. But where you're cooking, you get very little light. And you can't really see what you're um, doing very well. So I rigged that up and Lindsay said it looked ugly and she didn't like it. And I said, well, I'm the one who does the cooking, so you don't get a say. It's definitely necessary and perfect for our purposes right now. So I'm glad you did it. Yeah, it worked out all right. Um, all right, I'm just gonna have a quick look over everything. So basically Jamie says, when the leeks are almost done, cook the pasta. Well, thanks, Jamie. If I was a chef, I might have a better idea of <laughs> when the leeks are almost done. So generally, you're probably better off doing that maybe a little earlier than you think you really need to. Because remember, your pasta is going to get stirred through your leeks anyway, and it's going to be, you're going to kind of use that heat with the egg. So you don't want it to be massively off but it's not like it has to be finished. It goes in immediately, everything has to be exact. It's just, um, you wanna have a pretty, 
you want to have a pretty good idea. And honestly, if you're worried about it, you can always take the leaks, leaks off the heat. So yeah. I think you're probably better off putting your pasta on a little late yeah. than too early. Again, um, my wife is a big believer in al dente pasta. She doesn't like oh, it yeah. to be too mm -hmm. soft, to be too overdone. So again, you don't want to have it sitting in the water and just getting overcooked. No. And it is, like you say, that residual heat of the pasta is what cooks the egg. There's no You don't heat cook on. the egg, yeah. yeah. So um, that part does need to be quite yeah. soon after the pasta comes off. This can be what stresses people out with carbonaras yeah. in general. But well, yeah, it's, um, I haven't messed it up. I'm sure I will mess it up today. <laughs> but Jamie does say that if you have it too hot, you will scramble the egg. And yeah. obviously that's not what you want to do. Yeah. So um, it's kind of a bit of a fine line, I guess. What I really should have done was look at the timestamp when you started sweating the leaks. Mm. I well, think I think it was, was about three... Okay. So I think we've got to go on 15 minutes. Yeah, I think you're right. I concur. Which is um, probably 15 minutes of Taylor ranting about things more than people bargain for. <laughs> it's not what they signed up for. No. Um, we could always prep the egg and cheese mixture in advance, although you don't really want eggs sitting out of room temperature. Yeah, I mean... Too long, because it gets a bit of a film. Look, I definitely think you would do that in advance. But I think that that's something I will do in advance as soon as I put the pasta on. Yeah. But it seems a bit early to be worrying about that before I put the pasta on. To be clear, people might be wondering if we're flouting some um, corona rules right now. We should be uh, clear and say You're allowed. this is completely allowed within Berlin's limits. Yeah. We're in a lockdown light right now, isn't that right? Yeah, it's, um, so you can have one household yeah. visit you. So if Grace was here and Will was here, that's totally fine. If Grace was here and some other people from another house were here, or one other person from another house was here, then that would not be okay. Yeah. So only two households can congregate. Um, I feel it was sold at any point. as a, a, a more intense lockdown than it currently feels like. I didn't realize all shops can basically stay open. Yeah. Uh, it feels very... It, I think the biggest thing that it's bad for is bars. Yeah. But we, I know that like it's, it's really bad for bars and hospitality at the moment. Restaurants can still sell food that's just takeaway only. So they're not losing as much as bars because I feel like bars... If you're going to get a takeaway beer, it's a lot easier and cheaper to just get that at the supermarket. Um, so I think bars have done the worst out of this lockdown, but also I think it's pretty clear that bars and honestly like illegal parties that people were having in parks and stuff were probably the main thing that was spreading the virus. So that was kind of necessary. Yeah. Now I don't want to get into a whole thing We've already listened to me rant about kitchens. We don't need to listen to me rant about Corona. No, let's skip that rant. Also Maybe. don't want a comment section filled with <laughs> fake pandemic. <laughs> I will type in all caps. Instead, let's talk about food because you know what? That's what brings us all together. We all yeah. eat. Many of us cook. <laughs> uh, so you said you were the one that cooks the most in your household. Has that always been the case? Is that a corona development? Oh, that's a corona development for sure. It's, um, so my lovely wife, Linz, is, uh, is a tour guide like I am, but... Not much of that happening not, right now. Not a lot of tourists. <laughs> Funnily enough, especially because we only do tours in English. So there were tourists, domestic tourism to Berlin, not a huge number, but if you were a tour guide in German, you would have seen a drop in your income. If you're a tour guide in English, you almost see, saw the complete evisceration of your income. Uh, so Lindsay started working from home, project managing this new kind of virtual tour concept 
And so she works a lot and I don't. <laughs> so I was doing the virtual tours, but there's not so much of that at the moment. Uh, so that's why I've taken on more of the cleaning, cooking, looking after Napoleon, domestic duties. Not that she did all of that, but it definitely used to be more 50-50 because our income and our work was also pretty 50-50. But whereas her income and work is now more like 80% to keep things even and fair. And just because I'm not the person that will make my wife cook me dinner after working eight hours while I've been sitting on my ass all day. Um, I do more, probably 80% of the domestic sort of stuff. And have you found that you enjoy cooking more now? Yeah, I definitely do. I'm just going to reboil that because we're pretty close to putting the pasta on. Yeah. Um, there's certain things. Uh, look, for a while there, I was trying all sorts of new stuff. And, you know, sometimes they work really well, like I thought this worked really well. In that same book, in the same Jeremy Oliver book, there's a vegetarian uh, moussaka, which is an, was an unmitigated disaster. Oh, no. And I'm blaming that exclusively on Jamie. That was not my fault. <laughs> um, it, was, Jamie about it was too watery, and I put in the right amount. But anyway, <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so I was trying lots of different stuff. And uh, as far as the water in this goes, I do yeah. just eyeball it. So I'm going to put it in probably three quarters. So pasta water is going in now, pre-boiled in the kettle. And I'm going to turn that stove on so I don't lose that boil. And you turn that up to full to get it boiling in. Yeah, basically full. And I'm going to put in some salt. Very good. I was uh, once told by an Italian that it should, pasta water should taste like the sea. That's very <laughs> salty. I'm probably not going quite that bad, but yeah. <laughs> it's maybe not super healthy, but for me, you've got to go pretty salty before you get to too salty. I feel like, especially if you're using some of that water, as we are in this dish, it does also go away towards uh, seasoning the final dish. Yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, it's more the kind of starchiness of the pasta. So what I'm doing is we know we want sort of three fifths. Yeah. So I'm just basically doing that and eyeballing it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take everything on the left, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, we gave people the measurements. They can absolutely measure it out if they want to be more precise. Ah, you're not. Ah, oh, I messed it up. <laughs> I was losing that one and I worried about that one and I lost all the rest. That's okay, but and suddenly Naps knows there's a possibility of food scraps and he's like arrived. That. I think that would be very disappointing. The main reason that you want to get rid of this quickly is because I'm not going to use that one. It's a gas cooktop and it will set a fire. Yeah. So the ones that are already burned, I am not using. I'm also wearing a wire for a microphone. Now in a perfect world, I would have two of these big pots and I would put the pasta in a big pot as well, but I don't. So I'm using my second biggest pot. Do you want it or not? Is he actually gonna eat some dry pasta? Yep. Is that nice? I mean, have you seen his kibble? <laughs> <clears throat> so um, some people, some people, some crazy people, actually break their spaghetti to get it to fit into pans. How do you feel about that? Uh, look, I feel fine about that. Damn, I was hoping for another rant. No, I'm just um, trying... <laughs> I do, I feel fine about that, I don't really care. Uh, I would probably, if I hadn't been thinking about it, I would have done that. Mm. But... I enjoy the, the scans is... that we do with spaghetti, this pressing it down, trying not to burn your hands. It's all part yeah. of fun. Um, but the other problem is when you break a lot of it, because I had a lot of it in my hand, mm. you always get those little bits that just go. Yes. So I was trying not to do that. I was trying to do it in a very calm, collected, reserved fashion and uh, dropped it on a naked flame and almost started a fire. So, you know, that's all good. I mean, I think that's probably what our viewers are waiting for. They probably want something to go terribly wrong. <laughs> 
disaster television. Yeah. It's like we were watching, uh, again, I talk about my wife a lot, but Lindsay loves a, a disaster movie where, where everything just gets blown up. And uh, we watched, she'd never seen the movie Deep Impact, if anybody remembers that from, I think it was the late 90s, maybe she early 2000s. She's seen Armageddon like a billion times. They came out the same year. Yeah, but the scene where they're running away from a tidal wave on a moped is just one of the classics of the <laughs> <laughs> Ah, Frodo. Anyway, um, she was complaining that not enough shit had blown up. There wasn't anything getting destroyed. And, uh... And then you get to the final scene and finally stuff happens. Oh yeah. So this is bubbling, I'm going to say frantically right now. Yeah, that is a... Uh, Do we want a frantic bubble? I'm turning it down a little bit, but I want it to still be boiling. And I would actually like to... I might take this a little bit off the heat. Just because I feel like that's... to a, See how there's still liquid in that, but there's not a lot of liquid. So that's kind of so where you want it. going for... How long now? Probably about 25 minutes. Honestly, that would probably go longer if I had a kept the, um, if I had a better pot, like a, the thicker bottom pot, the reason that's so much better is because it diffuses the heat mm -hmm. and it, you're less likely to get stuff just burn on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but because I don't have that, this is just an Ikea pot. It's not terribly high quality or anything. I want to be able to keep an eye on it and keep stirring it. So if people and at home the... have been using like a casserole dish, a thicker base pot, if they covered it, they might want to pause before the... Um, Just before we add you want to get it to that kind of consistency. Yeah. So if it's at that consistency, that's fantastic. If, it's, if you've still got too much liquid, um, then just keep it going. If it's a charred black mess, <laughs> then it may not be something you can redeem <laughs> from here and I recommend more wine. Go back to the beginning of the video and pour some more wine. <laughs> if there's still leak available in Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> or wherever you are. It'll be like the first time something sold out in Berlin since November 89 and bananas. Or toilet paper this <laughs> <last> week. <laughs> My recommendation, if any of you are in a place that is going into lockdown or is in lockdown and you're having trouble with um, finding toilet paper, which they call Hamsterkaufen in German, which yeah, is great. Um, my recommendation is to go to a supermarket that is in the CBD, in the business district where there's not a lot of apartments, where it's mostly offices. Because when you're in pseudo lockdown and people aren't going to their offices, then those offices don't need to purchase toilet paper, which means those supermarkets will generally still have it. Good tips, Taylor. Even when you couldn't find it in suburban Berlin, you could still find it in the supermarkets that were in the center. Very good. So might now be the still one up. Now is the time to do the egg. Did you want that off the log? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't have to have it on, so. Let's, let's save the energy. Um, so now is egg time. What I really want to do, I'm worried about sound, but I want to let some of this steam out, so. Let's give it a go. We I mean, can hear a little bit of the kids, but I, I think, think we'll be fine. okay. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're putting an egg and, um, yeah, you know what, actually I'm not gonna do it yet, because you are supposed to have the water from the, um, use a splash of the reserved cooking water. Okay, so basically what we're doing, leaks done, passes in the pan and boiling water. When that's done, we're gonna to toss the pasta into the leak pan and then remove it from the heat. So I'm gonna put the leaks back on the heat just for a little bit. Like I said, you're better off, in my opinion, having the pasta a little bit late. But if we were gonna be perfect about it, we would have put the pasta on probably about four or five minutes earlier. Okay. Um, there's nothing perfect about this. There's shit. nothing perfect when I cook. <laughs> Are we going to keep a mug of that starchy water like we already talked about? So you're not going to mix the cheese and the egg beforehand? Or is that something we could do? You know? I'm going to do it when the pasta's pretty much ready. Okay. And then we're going to put it all together. And it should be fine. We're on the home stretch now, so it all should be... How long have we been going? Uh, 54 minutes. Okay, cool. That's pretty good. 
So we probably, if we put the pasta on when we should have put the pasta on, we we're probably, probably pretty much bang on for an hour. Anyway. We always want it more relaxed than less relaxed. So this is fine. And he's still far too al dente, but we're getting there. There's al dente and then there's raw. <laughs> Napoleon needs to delete it. Uh, yeah, so what to do, what to do. If you haven't yet grated your parmesan, which I told you to do ages ago. <laughs> Told you, dude, you if you really haven't done that, then you aren't paying attention. And if you're not paying attention, then what are you even doing here? It's gone into teacher mode. Isn't it? <laughs> Might be my only job opportunity left if the tourists don't come back. Because yeah, no one's I mean, going to give me a job as a TV chef. Once we're not in the midst of a global pandemic, come and check out Taylor Made Tours in Berlin. Yeah. This is Taylor and his wonderful wife Lindsay's business. She's a very good friend of mine too. Um, and they're just great. We just need the people. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could, time. honestly, I could just walk around the city talking to myself, but uh, it loses something. And it doesn't generally pay so well. Not so much, no. Apart from no. the coppers that people throw into your mug. <laughs> <laughs> So when I first started here, this is actually how I met Grace, I was a free tour guide. So that's the idea where you give a tour and then people tip you what, you, what they think it was worth. Uh, and I once had a woman on, my t on a tour say, oh, you should have a hat. You know, when I'm getting people to give me money at the end, she's like, you should have a hat so everybody can put their money in. And I'm like, yeah, but if it was a hat, you would think coins are okay. And I no, don't want you to no, think it's that. It's going to fly out of a hat. Yeah. yeah. It's not, no. So, um... Yeah, it's an interesting uh, education into human psychology being a free tour guide. It really is. Okay, so I think um, we're getting reasonably close here. So I'm going to actually put this pot back on, but I'm going to put it on the smallest hob at the lowest heat. Mm -hmm. So that's just basically to keep it warm which is all I want at this stage. So what we've got in there is this beautiful, hot, moist, hot, moist pile, of leeks, awesome. pile of leeks and garlic. <laughs> I mean, if that doesn't excite you, then really Once nothing again, will. Taste buds um, actually does smell really good. Uh, and then we've got the pasta, which is not too far away from being done. So much so that I'm gonna actually Try a bit. Do you do one of those throw against the wall tests? No. I've heard of that. I have heard of that. If you do that, you're an idiot. <laughs> you get a piece and you eat it. Yeah. Because funnily enough, when it's cooked, you're not going to throw it all against the wall. I mean, if you were going to use it as plaster, definitely test it by throwing against the wall. <laughs> but if you want to eat it... Test it by eating it. Test it by eating it. It's not quite there. But you'll finish it anyway. <laughs> no, I'll give it to the dog. It's always funny when he gets one bit stuck and he's trying to eat the other bit and then he just flicks around his head. Napoleon! Hey! He has been very good. He has been good. He's an insane dog normally, so this is... Uh... Well, he's insane when Grace comes over because he likes Grace. I've known him since he was a pup. And he's insane when he goes outside because... Yeah, oh, who knows? <laughs> but he's normally at home, enough. he's kind of like this. Like he's yeah. just pretty chill. I'm surprised kids are still at school. What time did they finish here? I thought it was about three. I don't know if it's school, school, or it's after school now. Got a picture here of what it should look like. I'm gonna compare it with your plated dish at the end. Nah. Mine's better than that. Jamie's got an artistic drizzle of oil. Yeah, Jamie's yeah. got an artistic drizzle of oil. He's got quite a lot of black pepper on that. Mm -hmm. I'm which I'm not necessarily opposed to. Um, and he's... Uh, he's actually grated parmesan. Which I have the pre-grated parmesan, so... Although, to be honest, 
If you got served that in a restaurant, first of all, I'd wonder why there's a pair of tongs in my food. That's true. But mainly I'd be like, where's the rest of it? You know, like that's a big plate. There's not a lot of food. You're going to be selling it right now, Taylor. Where are the leeks? I don't see any leeks in there. You don't really see it by the end. Like you'll see it when you eat it, but they kind of, kind of, they get lost in the pasta a little bit. So you get the taste without seeing big chunks of leeks. I actually think I might want a little bit more water in that. Yeah, the water should cover it, huh? Um, but yeah, we're not far away. So this is uh, the beauty of doing it in real time. What's that? Your chat? That there's a little bit of dead space. Oh, that's okay. Dead space is welcomed. Dead space or pour to... yourself another glass of wine space. Is that a hint? Well, I can't really expect you to do it. This is the first time you've ever worked a camera in your life. And if I'm going <laughs> to get you to pour a glass of wine at the same time. The gimbal helps. The gimbal makes up for all my mistakes. It is good. It just like smooths it. everything out. It yeah. makes um, The thing that gets difficult, though, is when you're using the joystick and you switch to selfie mode, because then what would, what would go down in front facing now goes up. Oh yeah, that's, I'm so not doing that. So that, that becomes nice confusing, that's very confusing until you get used to it. Naps, I know you he want food, but that. what are you gonna do? He's gonna sit there looking adorable. All right. Can you tell people what Napoleon is? He's a cross between- Napoleon, come here, <laughs> sit. I'm not giving you food though. Uh, Napoleon is 75% French Bulldog, 12.5% Mini Pincher, 12.5% Chihuahua. Wow. But that is because his dad was 100% French Bulldog. His mum was half French Bulldog, quarter Mini Pincher, quarter Chihuahua. And the reason we got a mix, I kind of, you know, because I'm an idiot, uh, always wanted a French Bulldog called Napoleon. <laughs> but French Bulldogs with their very squished faces, they have some breathing issues. Yeah. And generally purebred dogs are, as a rule, not the healthiest dogs. Yes. So we wanted a mostly Frenchie, but one with a slightly more um, dog-like snout. And less health issues. Yeah, so this is him. He has a snout and he has a tail, which Frenchies don't have. Look at that. Which is funny, because he has the Frenchie ears that stick yeah. up. Yeah. But apart from that, he actually looks like a Staffordshire Terrier puppy. Mm -hmm. Staffies have a long history in my family. Very, very Staffies are gorgeous Staffies. dogs, yeah. but they are big and they can be very kind of tough dogs. Like sometimes people you would use them as like guard dogs and stuff. Well, the thing is they're so intelligent and they look so tough. Um, so they're intelligent, which means people can train them to do whatever they want. So in the wrong hands, yeah, they can yeah. be dangerous. Um, and they look tough, so people love that. But at heart, they're just the sweetest, most family-friendly dogs. And so I think that sometimes people see Napoleon and they think he's a staffy and they freak out more than they need to. Yeah. And if they just saw a Frenchie, they'd be like, oh, look at that stupid squished-faced dog. <laughs> yeah. Whereas they see Napoleon and think he's going to be tough. All right. Okay, we're getting to the point where we're going to start doing stuff now. So these are both on the heat right now. Yeah, that one's on super low. This one's boiling. Okay, so we're gonna strain the pasta and we're gonna toss it in the pan with the leek. So first of all, we wanna get our colander ready and I'm gonna turn that one off and away we go. So we don't have to be particularly fancy with that. Nice. We've got Probably about half a cup of that, which is really all we need. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna go back over that so I don't drip it everywhere. And then we're gonna go in. Straight into the cup. Okay, and then we're gonna have a couple of minutes where we just kind of stir all this together. Mm -hmm. And you just wanna get it so that you are distributing the leak mixture through it. So now you don't want a hot, moist pile of leek. That time is over. That time is over. 
you want to bring it through the pasta as much as you can. Now it's never going to be perfect. And this is probably where Jamie used his tongs. Well, fine. <laughs> if you have tongs, great opportunity to use something you probably don't use that much. Any self-respecting Australian has good tongs. Oh yeah. But then I should also have a barbecue. With all your shrimps and your barbies. Throw another shrimp on the barbie indeed. Okay, so this is still on the heat. It's not on a lot of heat, remember? It's on a very small amount of heat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm now going to take it off the heat. And this, it'll still be a lot of residual heat in it. But I'm gonna take it off the heat enough time for me to um, do the, uh, the egg and the cheese. I'm going to spread that out just a little bit. And then we're going to run that through this. And I actually generally don't love doing the tongs just because I worry that the metal is going to kind of cut the pasta and I don't want that to happen. So I went to all the trouble to not break it. All right, so let's deal with the egg. I'm going to take that off the heat. And I'm just going to use the measuring cup for the egg and So it's just one egg. And I'm gonna just eyeball the parmesan as well. So this is 60, I want 50. So I'm just gonna keep enough to put over the top of two. I might actually beat the egg a little bit first. Jamie says you're supposed to leave the pasta on the pan two minutes. It's gonna be pretty And spot. it should be pretty much exactly the right amount of time you need. And that leaves me about enough to put on two plates. Now this does say it serves four. Honestly, if this was four, I would probably um, Wait, what are you doing want something here? else. Oh, I'm putting a little bit of the starchy water from the pasta in to just um, loosen it. What kind of texture are people aiming to achieve, do you think? Um, kind of slightly watery, like a creamy sort of consistency like that. Nice, so you've used about a quarter of that mug, do you think? Yeah, look, honestly, I'd say it's about a quarter of a cup that I've used. And so you've got, the egg isn't cooked. It's all mixed in like a creamy consistency with the pasta. Mm -hmm. It looks a lot yellower in this light than it did before, yeah. but yeah, that's all it kind of is. And now I'm going to go back to the spoon to stir this in. Okay, so... And then we want to kind of just bring that all around. Nice. And it basically is just going to be this, hopefully, this somewhat sort of velvety mm -hmm. sort of consistency over everything. You don't want it to cook, like you, you want it to cook, but you don't want it to cook into a scrambled egg. Yeah, don't be worried about the lack of actual heat on the egg at this point. The residual heat from the spaghetti is more than enough to cook it through. I'm still probably a little bit. I don't really want to waste any cheese. That's a very good feeling. So that's pretty much good. And just keep that going through. And then as soon as you've got that through, it's kind of like there's not a real visual cue to know that it's that it's through and it's the right thing. It'll just look sort of velvety. It'll have a, a kind of a shimmer to it, I guess. And, um, and then it's pretty much done. Like it doesn't require anything after that. Now it's, it's almost immediately ready to serve. So I'm gonna put some on a plate so you get an idea as to sort of what it looks like. 
let's move that over there. This is when you really want your um, tongs, because this is when the tongs really are useful. So basically, I'm gonna go pile of that. Beautiful. So that's probably enough for Jamie Oliver, but screw that noise. <laughs> I'm going in for more. Let me just get a little bit off. And so. So that's more like it. Oh, yeah. And then you want a little bit of parmesan. I'll probably go a crack of salt and a do decent. Do you tend to put your salt on, on the individual portions or would you often season? Look, if I think you've got salt in the water of the pasta. Yeah. Um, and if you know that you and whoever you're cooking for both love the same amount of salt, then by all means season whenever you want. But I feel like salt's such an easy thing to put on at your own leisure that it's easy enough to just let people do it however much they want. Because some people want tons of salt, some people, for some unknown reason, don't want much. And then I'm going to go a little bit of parmesan over the top. Beautiful. And uh, there you go. That's there you go, Nats. No, just joking. <laughs> Dish there you go. one. So, um, you should probably try it, I guess. Sure, give it a go. To make sure it all worked out. To make sure we haven't just cooked something disgusting. Yeah. You'll come and visit me in a couple of days and you'll just still see it sitting in the dog bowl. You won't <laughs> even eat it. Probably don't want an enormous spoonful Spaghetti of it. Spaghetti is the perfect thing for eating on camera. I'm excited about this. <laughs> yeah, I'm being way more delicate with it than really? I would normally I'm doing be. Very well. Look at that. Pro. Huh? That'll do. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. You heard it here first. <laughs> Alright, everyone. Well, guten appetit, as we would say here in Germany. Let us know how you liked it. I'll see you next time. Good luck, everyone. Thanks, Taylor. Bye. Bye.